Hey, Stoop Story listeners, it's LeDrew, co-host of Stoop Stories. We have an exciting episode for you guys this week where we cut up all of the highlights and some of the best quotes and lines from the past 15 episodes and put it into one single episode for you to enjoy. We'll be back next week for a brand new episode, but for now, enjoy this Stoop Stories highlight reel. Thank you all for listening and following along over the past few months. Hit that subscribe button, follow us on all social media networks, and most importantly, don't forget to get off the stoop. Yeah, I think vision isn't enough, though. Like, I can think about what I want all the time. Action is really what creates my vision to come true. 100%. Because I, I hear a lot of people talking shit about what they want to do. Mm. Like, I hear a lot of people say, hey, you know what, I want to be rich, LeDrew. Yeah. I hear a lot of people say, like, hey, man, I want to get a promotion, man. I hear a lot of people say, like, yeah, that car out there, I'm getting one of those. Yeah, I need that. I need <laughs> that. I've, I hear that all the time. Absolutely. But the here, here, like, what's the difference between bullshit, which is what that is, mm-hmm. and true vision, which is like what actually creates inspiration? Yeah, the plan. So you know, oh, time out real quick because I think that right, what you just said is the the truth. That's the real. That's the that's the real. Yeah. Because the reality is everything I just said about I need the house and I need I want to be rich and all of that is just words. Yeah. And words are just words until you create a plan, which is why we have people here do the intentional path. Mm-hmm. It creates the plan for your vision so you can actually accomplish it. 100%. We talk about OKRs, which is simply having a vision. This is my objective I'm trying to create in my life. And here's my key results, my three key results, objective and key results. And my key results actually is my plan for me to create uh, to create my objective to become reality. Yes, which is the vision. Right. So like that's a good that's good for the listeners to to think about is like, okay, cool, we got a vision. Mm-hmm. Next comes the plan. Yes, if I want something, I can get it because everything is possible. I do believe that. But how do I get it? That's the that's the hard part. And this exercise is good for anybody at any age group. Correct. I'll tell you this. I just did this with my daughter Sloan. Uh, Sloan wants to be, she, she wanted to hit the, hit her driver. She, she started playing golf. She wants to learn how to drive the ball better. And there was three things she wanted to do. One was drive the ball. One was learn how to play basketball. And one was like something with a Frisbee or whatever. And we were sitting there talking. I'm saying, okay, well, like, okay, I I appreciate you want to do this. Like, how are you going to do it? Right. And she couldn't give me any solid answers. So I entered, I introduced OKRs into our life. We went to our whiteboard and we wrote this out. Those, those were her three objectives and our key results. And so basketball, one of the key results was for three times a week, she's going to spend 30 minutes outside with me and we're going to do drills because she wants to play on the basketball team this year. And she's been a ballerina her whole life, not done any team sports, but this is something she really wants to do, right? So like, that's a simple way uh, to really illustrate how easy it is to have a vision and then create an actual plan to help you actually accomplish your dreams. Yeah, man, I, I love that. So you talk about sacrifice or lack thereof. What you do is who you are. So whatever you have done, you have to live that life, which is why sacrifice worked out for you when you went home when you were 23. And then when I decided to get fed up and get off the stoop, and as soon as I started sacrificing in my life, guess what happened? It changed. It changed. Immediately, and then compounding over time, it changed in a really, really big way. So sacrifice is actually undefeated. It cannot not work. Let's give let's give the listeners five things they need to do from a sacrifice standpoint in their lives today. Yes, I think the first and most important thing that you must sacrifice is your environment. Mm-hmm. It turns out most people enjoy going to places that won't grow them, such as P and L at one a.m. Yeah, or um, I don't know, just the bar to go watch the game. Well, it's the easy stuff, right? The easy stuff, yeah. yeah. The stuff that's easy. I mean, going to the um, you know the aisle where the cookies are at the store. Yeah, right. That's a lot easier than staying in the produce hanging out there. Or going to the store without a plan. Or going to the store without a plan. So, you know, environment is the first. um, So the willingness to sacrifice your environment 
So if I'm in an environment right now that I know isn't growing me but pulling me away, what should I do? You should stop going because chances are you're going there. But what if, I le- what if I live there? That's tough. What if I work there? Yeah, then you, you have to if, – if you, if you live there, you, there's not a whole lot of things you can do about what you live, where you live. If, if that's the environment, you can, you can work to build up to get out of there. But while you're in it, you can do things with your time to make the environment not – take a hold of you too. Yeah, here's what I would say as far as environment. I would say you can change it. I would say that you're powerful. I would say that you have the ability to change things. It just because you live or you're not where you want to be, you have the ability to make the change necessary to make it where you should be. Yeah. Everything around you can be maneuvered. Life isn't stagnant. It's only the way you make it. So can I give you Move an example the air. from one of the executives? Yes. Talk about environment, right? So I'm on a call last week, and uh, the environment and the workspace that morning was, woe is me. And there wasn't a lot of energy. And the executive said, he said, I saw that. And then immediately, he said, I went to my office. I think he like, grabbed a Red Bull and like, chugged a little Red Bull or <laughs> something. And he said, I just start acting crazy. Tons of energy, clapping my hands, Ric Flaring, getting the guys riled up. And guess what happened to the environment that was doom and gloom? It changed. It changed immediately. And he said it was. The, it turned out being the best morning meeting that they had and that they all went out and had a fantastic day. And he carried that energy throughout the entire day. So when his teammates called him on the phone throughout the day, he kept that energy with them. And for the rest of the day, everyone was energetic and happy to be there. Your, your mind is so powerful. It has the ability to either fall into the trap of believing, believing that everything is bad and you should retreat to everything is the way I want it to be and I should create. Yes, indeed. And so when we say environment being number one, it's change your environment. And I don't mean you got to leave. Yeah, that's true. You have to change it. That means if you don't like the place you work or where you work, Change it. Don't be the guy who sits in the back of the room. Sit in the front, ask questions, and make it change. Mm. Make it change. They used to say in my other environment, make it rain. I was going to say make it shake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the right, you're in the wrong environment. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. Make it change. So, and I just want to be clear on something real quick because we talk a lot about success. And I want to, I, I want to be clear that success to me isn't about money. Correct. And I was just talking to you about this before we walked in here. And, uh, you know, success to me is about time. Obviously, time with resources is much better than time without. And so success to me is having on the time to do whatever you want, however you want, with whomever you want. And have the resources to do it. Yes. Right? Like, time is valuable. Now, people who aren't listening or who say they want something, what they're doing is uh, rewinding their life and they're not moving forward. And because they're not moving forward, they'll, they'll never have the time that they look, that they want. So then they'll most likely leave, uh, lead an unhealthy life because they'll never have time to exercise. They'll most likely lead a unfulfilling life because they'll mm. never have the time that they want to be fulfill, to fulfill it with the things that they really want. Like, I don't know, if they like to hike or they like to, you know, travel or whatever. Like, success creates that time for you so you can really live your life fulfilled. 100%. So you can give to others. But if you're always on somebody else's time because you have to make money because you're not successful yet, like, that's what hurts, mm. right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the time exchanged for money, right? Um, that's what people think success is. But you're exactly right. Success is really measured by how you use your time. So that what you have uh, when you're in control of your time to create the change you want to see because you have the resources you need, you know, I think the thing I appreciate about Southwind is our CEO, Josh Heron, who's on this podcast, and our CFO, Tyler Stasek. They use their ch- time to provide opportunities for everybody else. Yeah, I mean, and to be honest with you, for, from, from a measure of success standpoint, on the outset, people would look at my life and say, wow, he's pretty successful. But when I look at it, man, I'm not even close yet because my, t- my day is 
full as hell. Yeah. I mean, like, every day, like, almost every waking moment, moment is accounted for. And, like, that's not success. I'm not even close to being there at this point. Like, in that, in, like, and I've been grinding for 13 years. And for the first four, seven days a week, hauling junk. The first time I saw a house in Mission Hills where I live right now was I was hauling shit out of it. I was hauling junk. I was hanging out with a friend of mine named Eric. And Eric's like, hey, looking at a house in Lake Lottawana, you ever been there? And I'm like, yeah, I've been there. Only because I worked there. I worked in the home removing stuff from those people who had a home there. You know, yeah, it was a business that I was running. But, like, at the end of the day, like, I mean, like, I'm not there yet. It takes a lot, man. 13 years I've been doing this. Yeah, working my ass off. It takes more. And it takes more. So you know what I hear when I hear that? What's that? Pony up, Drew. Because you're in for the long ride. Yeah, well, it's a marathon. It is. There ain't, there's no sprint in, There's no sprint to get your time. There's no sprint to get success. You know? I don't want to retire and be like, uh, and like, like, I don't want to have to retire because I'm like 80 years old because it took me that long. Yeah. And like everything I wanted at that point, you know, I finally get, but I'm 80 and I'm dying in five years. Yeah. And I don't get to enjoy it. Like, so grind now. There's only, the time is now. Quit wasting the time. Like, there's no time to waste. And it kills me to see people being imposters and wasting the time when they absolutely have the ability, when they have the knowledge, and they just don't do it. Stop that. Stop it. They need a whooping. They got man. If I wish look, I was their man, parents. I look. I'll bring mom up to Southwind. Yeah, we need to line them bring this, up. Bring the switch, mama. Come on up to Southwind. Stop wasting the time. Yeah, stop doing. The it. time is now. It's today. It's not tomorrow. It's not next year. It's not on uh, January first, twenty twenty one. I'm gonna have a New Year's resolution. That's not when it is, Deludro. It's right fucking now because there's no time to waste. Yeah, man. Stop wasting time. This reminds me of a conversation that I had with the pastor who was, who was an econ grad from Stanford this weekend. And we were talking about belief. And I love what you said. Like, you have to believe you deserve it, that you're worth it. And, you know, growing up, I actually, you know, I was, I was explaining this to him uh, about how my belief was contaminated. How I believed that I couldn't be smart because I'm black. So I didn't really apply myself in school and I was good at, at sports and, I, and I'm fast. So I'm like, man, I'll just use this as the vehicle to get me where I need to go mm -hmm. until I realized I'm not going to the league. <laughs> and then I had to snap out of it. And then I started getting the grades that coordinated with, uh, you know, my education major, which had to be a 3.0 cumulative GPA to even enter the program. And at that time I wasn't, so I had to retake a lot of classes. Moral of the story being, man, I had to change my beliefs to align with me believing that I'm worth it and it's possible for me. Yeah, so you didn't believe you were worth it or that you could be smart because you were black. Why do you think that was? It was because I saw the obstacle being minorities aren't really winning out here yeah. where I was from. And then we moved from the inner city where I'm like the only black kid in the class and there's only a handful of us in the school. And the majority, like, the majority of the black people that I saw, like they didn't hold positions that I saw as respectable in the community, you know. Um, so yeah, I thought that that wasn't for me. But guess where I did see a lot of black people on TV playing sports or rapping or rapping. Yeah. So I said one of the two: I'm a rap or play sports. Yeah, there's really no easy way to become successful, and like I think ultimately everybody has this feeling inside of them where they want to be more. Yeah. Like I want to be more. I want people to see me and believe that I'm worth something. Yeah. Um, and, and that's totally acceptable. And wanting more for yourself is exactly what should be happening. Uh, but there's this component of like wanting more for yourself and then matching it up, backing it up with the discipline it takes to get more for yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, man, I hear, I've heard you tell a story before about you know, not seeing anybody around you that you deem smart that resembled who you actually were as a human being and the negative effect that that has on that that had on you and in the same right i see you now walking the halls and you know other minority men walk up to you 
and they look at look up to you. Yeah. And you can be that person that you didn't have Boom. for somebody else. So that's the answer. When you ask, you know, you ask the people, man, why do you want to do it if it's lonely? It's because everyone's counting on you. Mm -hmm. So that you can be that person to say, hey, look, it's possible. I'm just like you. Whether that be you're a minority or whether you're a woman or whether you're a foster child, you you have to be that person. We're all counting on you. So that when that when the person that grew up in foster care sees you and you're successful, they don't have an excuse as to why they can't be. So when they see the obstacle in their way, they can say, man, I can get through it because he did. So he created a belief in me that makes it possible for me. So I know that everybody in the world can win at the same time. We don't got to kill each other. Black people, white people can get along. There don't even have to be a, a movement about it. You know, everything can be okay. You know, all it takes is us believing that we are worthy of success and us believing that We've got to make it through this obstacle because people have to see me here in order for them to believe. So they're counting on me. So I know this is true. You know, the people that, you know, it, you know, when you decide to make that change in your life and you start doing all the popular things, you're going to have friends that fall out and say that they don't like you or that you're fake or that you change or this. But those same people that hate you the most in the beginning will love you the most in the end because you're their only outlet to getting out. And when they do, they'll thank you so much. And I know you as a CEO, you've had so many people come up and I've heard them, you know, just come up and thank you for the opportunity. We had a, a former employee come back to this building today because of what this place is and just say, hey man, thank you. Thank you. I, I saw him dap you up this morning, yeah. walked all the way to your I office to come find you. Know, you. That is always a testament to like, and not to toot our own horns, because we do certainly have our fair share of failures here, but uh, that's something that I always, you know, pride ourselves. I, I pride myself in in this business is that uh, not a lot of people like going to work a lot, right? Most people don't want to go to work. Uh, most people definitely don't want to go to a place that they used to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So when we get employees that have uh, worked with us in the past, or they come back and they, you know, they they're just checking in and seeing how we're doing, and uh, I always find that uh, you know. I, that's gratifying for me. That, that says we did something right along the way, and we may not done all, everything right because they're still not with us today. But uh, you know, we at least gave them enough good advice or enough. Uh, we gave them an environment that they believe helped them grow, which is you know what this is all about. So yeah, I, lo I love that about this place. He was a uh, Victor Frankel wrote this book. Like I think it's called like Man Man's. Meet, like the the meaning of life basically is the title of it, uh, man's search for a meaning in life or something along those lines. And Viktor Frankl had spent three he survived three different concentration camps, mm -hmm. and so like he has kind of what, a unique perspective. And I think what we really get down to is like everybody's meaning for life is different, you know. So there's not the meaning of life; it's your meaning of life. So when we talk about you know what's the meaning of life. You know, LeDrew, your meaning of life is going to be different than mine, most likely. Or maybe it's aligned. I don't know. Well, um, well, let's see, because I disagree to an extent. What I believe the meaning of life is, the foundation for everyone is the same. However, how you express it can be different. The meaning of life, from what I've found to be true, is 100% about service. The meaning of life is service. So you think about anyone who's up to something, they're really good at service. Mm -hmm. I love the honey crisp apple. That tree is exceptional at its service. It makes it just right in season, every season. Yes. Or Steve Jobs, service component is why we know his name. Anyone who's ever been great has been great at serving the world something. Anybody that you can remember has courage and service at the foundation of who they are. Mm -hmm. But what they served could be totally different and that's why I really like the analogies of you know working as a janitor to pay the tuition you know being a janitor that's a service people have to have a clean place to go relieve themselves that's necessary somebody has to do that job someone has to be the trash man to pick up my trash on Mondays which is my trash day someone has to do that and we want the best trash man that would hop out of the truck when they see a piece of paper floating down the street to pick it up and put it back into the trash truck 
so that the neighborhood looks sufficient. Mm -hmm. So I believe that the purpose of life is always service based. So relate that to so relate that to our 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 teams in the field right now. Yeah. How do we serve our purpose? See, to me, and that's what I love so much about Southwind and why it was so easy for me to give up what my past vision was to join this team is because it helps people that don't understand that you're only here to serve exercise that service muscle every single day. So you go on a junk job, you're going to serve that customer because they have a problem and you're here to fix it. That's a service. You're on a move job. That's the most stressful time in a person's life and you get to go be a servant to them for eight to 10 to 12 hours or however long it takes. MVP, same deal. So we actually get a cheat code. We get to work our service muscle every single day in a capacity that's one-on-one with another human. Mm-hmm. So if you think about what anybody does for work, it's a service. Yeah, I was to just the, thinking about that yeah. as you were saying that, like everybody, everybody basically is serving, and, correct, and that's how they're making money. Correct. A banker is serving in yes. a way where it's allowing you to save money or keep it secure. A uh, you know a teacher is his service is helping yes. students learn. You know, a basketball player, a football player, services to entertain us. Yes, everybody's in service, and really the 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 difference is. How good are you at it? That's it. <laughs> you know, like how good are you at it is going to determine how much money you make. Yep. You know, like if I'm leading an organization, how good am I at serving the people so that they do their very best is going to determine my income at the end of the day. The purpose of life. If I'm at 1-800-GOT-JUNK, how good I am at serving my customers or my teammates is going to determine how good I am or excuse me, how much I am paid. Mm -hmm. or where I get to go afterwards. Yeah, yeah. so a mentor of mine once told me a quote, uh, and it says, he among you who wishes to be the greatest must become the servant of all. And that's when I mind shifted. So sometimes I see in our hallways as I walk around, people that are salty about serving. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't want to serve anybody today. Man, I'm trying to actually, I'm trying to go home. That's why you, you and it's funny because we start talking about that and, uh, a disrespectful thing you can say about somebody is that they're self-serving. Yes. And that's that's a disrespect. Like you could say something like, hey, he's a self-serving son of a... Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? And like, you're like, damn, that be, that's mean. Yeah, we, <laughs> you know? yeah, we talk about those people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's great. I, I love that definition of... And I, and I actually, you know, I think I agree with that. You know, the, if I can get behind the meaning of life or why we're here is to be of service yes because it seems that everything we do is either to serve or somebody serving us when we're consuming a service one of the hardest working um one one of the type the type of person that if there's an issue he's gonna find the solution to the problem he's a he's the type of guy who is uh, never just going to accept things for what they are. He's going to change them because he knows that life is malleable and it, we make it whatever we want to make it. So I uh, love, excited and loving to have, love to have Aaron on today. And it's uh, going to be a really good opportunity for our listeners to hear from somebody who is, as we say, up to something. He's most definitely up to something. Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me on. And, you know, I, I hear it all the time of, uh, I just want your position. I, I want to be where you're at. And people ask me all the time, like, you know, how did you get there? How, how did you get to the position you're in? How did you convince Josh and Tyler to to get you up there? And, you know, the biggest thing is like, like truly being willing to do whatever it takes, right? Like there's, when I went to work for Southwind, there was a hundred guys that I was competing against. And there was guys that, you know, they're better managers than me. They're probably better influencers. But the thing is, like, I was always willing to jump. Like, I I made sure that I was known one way or another. I made sure that once I found out that Aaron Hozak came in at 6 o'clock in the morning, I wanted him to see, back then I had a, a, like, I think a 2008 Malibu or something like that, you know? And and I made sure that he saw my shitty Malibu every time he came in in the morning, you know? Like, I think sometimes he'd come in, he'd see the Malibu and just, like, kind of roll his eyes because – like, I didn't even really have a purpose in there. Like, I'd go in, I'd sit in his office and just watch him. He's like, man, what, what, what you doing? I was like, I just, I just want to see what you do. You know, I want to see what you do because I want your fucking job. Like, I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And, and uh, you know, Matt McKinney hit me up 
uh, about a month ago. And he's like, bro, he's like, you, you hear episode five yet? And I'm like, no, not yet. He's like, bro, he's like, listen to it and call, listen to it and call me. And some of the things that like really stuck out with me on that episode five was, you know, you guys had made a, a comment that you guys made a list of all the guys that were franchise partners, managers, and stuff like that. And you said, uh, I want to see, you know, who's willing to do whatever it takes. Or I think back then it, it was, it takes what it takes or something like that. And uh, you said, man, the list isn't as good as I want it to be. And I remember thinking right there is like, I knew my name was on that fucking list. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was no question in my mind that my name was on that list. And I think there's a lot of franchise partners that they, they, I'm not even going to say franchise partners, just people in general that's listening that they had have to question like, man, am I on that list? And if you, you don't know hundred percent that you're on that list, like change what you're doing. But there's a lot of things that I'm doing that I knew I was on that list because like, I, I'm truly willing to, to do whatever it takes. Like I'm the first one in, I'm the last one to leave. Like, you know, I think another thing that you guys said in there you know, be willing to not fit in, right? So, like, if you jump in my truck, and uh, I don't know if some people, like, jump on YouTube to, to look at your liked videos or something like that. If you look at my liked videos, it's all fucking, like, sales content, or it's all it's all something that's, like, educational, like, something that's going to motivate me to get better. I don't have any videos. I'm not listening to music. Somebody came in my office the other day. It's like, oh, man, you see that episode of the – I don't even remember what he said. I'm like, nah, man, I ain't, I ain't even watch TV. <laughs> like, like, I don't have time to watch TV. I have a little four-year-old. I have a little one-year-old. Like the, the TV is there, theirs. You know, like my thing is, if I'm gonna watch something, it's gonna be something that betters me to push me to the goal. And my goal is to win, right? Like we talk about Southland being a hundred million dollar company. Like, no, fuck that. Like we're gonna hit a five million dollar company. You know, and, and once it's five million dollars or five hundred million dollars, like we're gonna be like, cool. How do we get to a billion? And there's certain people that are gonna hold us back, and we have to sit there and say, like, you know if those people aren't pushing us to that goal, we, we just need to get rid of them. So I'm going to use my company as an example, right? So like when you guys said that you guys did a list, I do that every day. You know, on my whiteboard, there's a list of all my guys. And I sit there and say, what I do is I put bet on them, right? Because I want to know that I can bet my job. on. That's something that Lou Drew taught me. He's like, bro, can you, can you bet your job on this guy? And so me, I have 18 guys that work for me. And I need to know that I can bet on at least half of those guys. And the guys that I can't bet on, I don't fucking want them. And I let them know. You know, another thing that you guys said in episode five, we need more leaders that are courageous enough to sit there and tell guys that you're lying to yourself. So that's the cool thing about me is I'm willing to do that, right? I'm willing to do whatever it takes to win. So when I can bet my life or bet my job on 10 of my 18 guys, I have to be courageous enough to go to those other eight guys and say, hey, like you're lying to me, you're lying to yourself, you're not willing to do whatever it takes and then show them how, right? Like I need to show them this is how to win. This is how to fucking show me that you really want to be here. And if they can't do that, then we have to replace them. We have to be courageous enough to get rid of those guys and find the right guys. And I, I think that's the biggest thing is we just have to ask ourselves, everybody that's listening to this, we have to ask ourselves, are we on that list that Josh and LeDrew made that they can sit there and say, this guy's willing to do whatever it takes. And if you're not, you know, give us a call. Give one of us a call. Give me a call. You know, I know I'm on that fucking list. So give me a call and I will help you get on that list. I'll paint that picture for you. So that's what it's all about, man. Being able to paint that picture and being able to take those, uh, those big jumps and be willing to do whatever it takes. There are two types of people. People that are victims and people who are victorious. And those who are victims, their self-awareness is, they don't have it. <laughs> those who are victorious have high levels yeah. of self-awareness. Well, let's give an example of a victim mentality when you're not self-aware of what your deal, what you know, the current state is. Yeah, I have a perfect one. I had a one-on-one -on -one this morning with someone who felt they could do nothing about it. All these things are just happening to me. And I prefaced the meeting with the two types of people. I said, man. Do you sound like someone who's making things happen or letting things happen? Guess what? Mr. Let things happen. Well, let things happen. People become victims. Yeah. Victims to be consumed by life, time. My buddy change that I met, you know, change. <laughs> he loves to change things into shitty situations for people who are victims. Time abuses the victim. But man, yeah. if you, if you're willing to make things happen, you can tell time what to do. Yep. 
I, and it's funny that you say that because everybody who says, I don't have enough time to do that, uh. is victimizing themselves at this point. Yes. Because guess what they still do? Eat, go to lunch, go watch home TV. at five o'clock. <laughs> you know, like what yeah. they really meant to say is like, hey, I've got this period of time between about 6.30 and about 4.30 that I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And if something needs to be done that's outside that 4.30 or 5 o'clock window, I'm not actually willing to do that. Yeah. So that, that like cuts my time off there. So like, yeah, I don't have enough time. Yeah. What? And But the reality is like, you got gobs of time. Man, there's all this extra time from 5 to, to, to midnight that you can still get done what needs to get done. And here's the thing, if it needs to get done, Guess what? It needs to get done. Yes. And there's no substitute because if you don't get it done, guess what? You didn't get it done. Yes. You didn't get done what needed to be done, so you failed. And that's just the reality of our situation on a daily basis. It's like, look, there's a day. Everybody has the same 24 hours, but how people work those 24 hours indicates their level of success. And so, like, if I work my 24 hours different than you in, like, I'm having more success than you. You need to evaluate how you utilize your time. And sometimes, even though I don't want to, or even though it's hard, I work when I get home. Yeah. And sometimes, it's 8 o'clock, I put the kids to bed, and I go again till 10. You know what I would say? Self-awareness tells me that not only do you work harder than I do, you're more effective than I am as well. And... The data would indicate the same. So self-awareness, man, I know that. So then I just study you. All right, I'm going to start figuring out this dude's moves instead of hate on you and and say, man, I should have that. (laughs) You know what I mean? I look at everybody in that way. You know, uh, I was actually having, well, man, it don't even matter, man, because at the the end of the day, (laughs) there's only two types of people, man. There's people who get it and people who don't. Man, I remember exactly who I was and how I thought before the mind. Well, shift. what was that? And let's, because we may find some of our listeners there. Uh, I didn't understand the process primarily because I was selfish. So wherever I was, it was never where I wanted to be. Mm-hmm. So instead of being present in the process, I'm thinking of where I would have rather yeah. have been. Yes, you nailed it. And think about this right now because it's the presence of thought. And as our boy Andy Major says, be where, where your, your feet, feet are, right? Yeah. Be where your feet are. And I think that's why, that what that's what happens and that's what creates this uh, feeling and makes you not respect what's happening in the process, yeah. if you yeah. will. Because you're thinking about, damn, I'm supposed to be rich right now. Yeah. And I'm sitting here doing this job. I need a new job. But what they don't tell you is when you get a new job, guess where you get to start at? At the bottom. At the bottom. And the process starts again, right? So, like, that that's one of those challenges. It's like a catch-22. And and uh, you instead, most people have to have the grit and determination to stay with it. Yeah. That's the hard part. That's the hard part of the process. Like, everybody, anybody could quit. Yeah. Anybody could quit anything at any time. Like, that's easy. Anybody can do it. Anybody can say, I'm done, I quit. Uh, but in order for you to achieve anything that's worthwhile in life you actually have to have grit and determination so we talk Mm -hmm. about like um you know always wanting to be somewhere else and chasing chasing that uh something that's elusive in your life maybe it's you know that new car and then you get it and then it feels bad or you feel like okay now what's next and then okay now i'm going to get an apartment and then i get my apartment then i'm like what's next yeah i want the house now yeah nothing will ever be enough to you if you don't Mm -hmm. respect the process yeah so i would say and this is why meditation is so important one i would ask the listeners uh, do you meditate and if you do do you find yourself struggling to have peace of mind to where your mind isn't wandering or or uh, drifting to other places because that's like uh that's what it's like to enjoy the process if you are in a space right now and you're always wishing you were somewhere else like you're not in the process so you can't get from it what it's trying to allow you to gain oh man that is so important say that again real quick uh that's gonna be tough yeah well here I'll (laughs) I'll, 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 I'll rephrase it for you okay you said if you're not in respecting the process understanding that you're in the process right now you are unable to learn anything from what you're going through yeah that's what I heard you say so, like, think about it right now. If you're not where your feet are and your your mind's wandering and you're thinking about, man, the next thing, yeah. and you don't 
take life for what it's giving, take what take what life's giving to you and learn from it, you missed. You missed all the learning that you were supposed to get in that moment. Yeah. Which is just heartbreaking and crushing because you went through it for nothing. Mm. The trials and tribulations and got nothing out of it. Yeah. You don't necessarily have to wait for a new year to to make a change in your life, but a new year is among us. And I know that people, myself specifically, I've wasted a lot of years and people might have wasted one this past year. So I want to make sure we are prepared in 2021 to create the change we want to see because we have that ability by dictating what we do with our time, which is called a plan. And you tell us all about planning here in Stoop Story. So if you didn't listen to that one, go all the way back, listen through again. Um, but what kind of change are you hoping to see in 2021? Uh, every year, what I'm hoping to see is growth. Mm. Like every year to me, it's always about moving forward, understanding that sometimes you take steps backwards in order to move forward. So I don't expect perfection, but I do expect to move forward this next year, not just myself, but for the entire organization. We're going to see leaders in Southland do things this year that they never thought they would ever be able to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to see things happen this year in 2021 that are going to astound us, shock us, and make us clap our hands because they're going to be, they're, I mean, they're going to be really, really good. So I'm excited about the forward progression of the leaders in this business, you know, another another year another opportunity to continue to help others reach their full potential another year to gain more knowledge to distribute to our teams you know to get better create more quality that's good out there i, I think about you know every year before this and now the year's moving past and i think man i just want us to continue to make strides to improve and if we do that yeah. I know we're moving in the right direction, I, and I feel really, really good about that. How about you? What do you I love it. I was actually talking to some parents on uh, JVon's basketball team this weekend about it. I, I love Southwind because it is all about growth. When we move a family, they're moving because they're growing and going to a new space. Mm -hmm. And I'm really passionate about that. I care about that. 1-800-GOT-JUMP-TO-ME. I think that might be, just in itself, my favorite business because – we're going to help people declutter and become free. You know, anybody who's up to something, they don't have clutter in their lives. Anyone who's up to nothing, guess what's there? Stuff. Stuff. You know, and they might not recognize that, but man, if you've got stuff right now, even if you work inside of Southwind, call 1-800-GOT-JUNK today and help us, let us remove it for you because you can't win with clutter in your life or your mind. So, you know, Southwind is all about even helping other people grow. Uh, so I'm excited about that because we'll service more families in the communities we serve than we have ever before in 2021. That's that right. means more people are growing. The world is getting better. Less clutter in their lives. They're moving on up to bigger and better places. And then they're getting HVAC and electricity <laughs> and plumbing, you know, uh, you know, as they need it. And I'm also excited for... You know, Stacia Kern and, and Marlon Williams alluded to this. I'm, I'm excited for the change that people will see in their own lives by being introduced to themselves, thus becoming mm -hmm. enlightened yeah. as they described their year of 2020. Because I know that, man, it's only just begun. They, you know, yeah. their journey has just begun. So I'm really excited for that change of people getting off the stoop in Southwind all over the place. That's right. And then whenever you see me on the stoop, Josh, I know I can count on you to. Man, tell me, tell me to get off the stoop. Well, I don't believe you'll be on the stoop again, LeDrew. I don't. I don't. I, th I think I threw my last pity party that last one by the pool table that one day. Yeah, I think there was one right after that. Actually, but they, in the yeah, office. That, yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> but uh, not, yeah. nonetheless, we won't have any more of those. You no, want to know no. why? Because I believe that everybody, you know, this year was, uh, you know, was there was enlightenment, uh, like really around around the horn. Lots of people learned lots about themselves, including yourself, including me. Yeah. And so excited about um, that as well. But man, it's going to be a great year. I'm really looking forward to a, just the battle. The battle be like between the ears. Mm. The battle in with your mind. You know, the battle making yourself, you know, do it. Whatever it is. Whether it's clean your room, just do it. Whether it's get up on time, 
make yourself do it, put yourself in the position to win, whether it's doing the extra work when you're here at work to make sure that you stand up. We've got Tyler on here today because we have a very important podcast. You know, it's a new year and we want to make sure that we're doing our part as leaders in the organization to make sure that everybody has what we call financial literacy. Everybody comes to work to make money. You know, ultimately, how much money you have is a reflection of how much money you save. And we have some questions we're going to ask Tyler here on the podcast to ensure that he's giving you his tips and tricks to getting financial uh, wealth and independence. So one thing I want to tell you about Tyler, and this is full disclosure, he's probably one of the most financial, financially astute people I've ever met in my life. He sacrifices, but makes all of the right financial decisions because he expects to live a life that, that uh, most people can't dream of, dream of. And so he's going to tell you some tricks uh, and some tips here that is going to help you get closer to that same reality. So let's go ahead and get started. So Mr. Stazek, Thanks for, get, thanks for getting on the podcast with us. Appreciate you. Happy to be here. So uh, my first question is, okay, so, you know, like everybody has financial challenges or some, most people have financial challenges and a lot of our listeners have questions about it. What's one key, um, what, what would you say is one key thing that has helped you ensure that you keep the right mindset when it comes to your finances? Uh, yeah, it's a couple things. I think, uh, you know, number one, you have to measure everything. Um, you know, everybody in this organization understands that we measure absolutely everything. So, you know, on the truck team level, it's, you know, revenue per hour, average job size, or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, the leaders of the business are managing all kinds of different metrics. And uh, you should do the exact same thing with your personal finances. You need to have a budget that you track to the penny every single week and every single month, uh, because if you don't do that, things will leak. And we know when we measure things, we improve things. Uh, and that's, that's priority number one. Yeah. On that budget, what are some of the things we'll want to have in there? Obviously how much money we're making, what are some other key, you know, some key to, you know, tips or topics that we need to put on our budget? Yeah. I mean, I've created a spreadsheet that I'm happy to share with anybody. Um, but you know, there's certain thresholds that you need to stay within. If you're spending, you know, half of the money that you make on rent and utilities and, you know, your cable bill, like you're sunk already. Um, so it really depends, you know, from the people that we work with, what I see with younger people most often, it's not the big things that really get them. Uh, it's the death by a thousand cuts. It's the, you know, $20 at quick trip every day. It's the, you know, going out every Friday and Saturday night and spending a hundred dollars each night. Uh, it's the, you know, Amazon purchases. It's the, it's the $50 purchases time and time and time again that don't get tracked. Um, you know, it's easy. Like I'll look at my credit card statement sometimes and, you know, whatever my balance is at the end of the month, a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars, it doesn't matter. And I'm looking for these big line items. I can't find one, man. <laughs> like there, there isn't the, the thousand dollar purchase on there, like I have a hard time finding a hundred dollar purchase. It's just that there's fifty things on there that were all, you know, fifty or seventy five bucks, and you know that's how it happens. So, um, you know, happy to share spreadsheets and you know thresholds. You know, there should be you should spend X percentage on your rent. You should spend X percentage on mm. you know food and you know every different bucket, and each thing needs to be measured. Um, but it's all that little stuff. It's all the, it's all the extra. It's the miscellaneous bucket. Now, here, here's one important thing that I want to say. Like, you can have everything in your life great, man. You can have awesome wife, husband, kids, friends, you know, live in a great city, wh whatever it is. You can have everything in your life lined up perfectly, but if your personal finances are not in order, you are not going to be happy with your life. It will infect in a negative way, every aspect of your life, if your personal finances are messed up. Uh, and I know people can relate. Um, it's just true. Like if your personal finances are messed up, everything is going to be a struggle in your life. If your personal finances are in order, man, you got the table set to do great things. So now it's not only time for you to get off the stoop. You tell the people nearest you to get off 
This is Stu. Thanks for tuning in to Soup Stories. <laughs>